Welcome back to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. Uh, I'm your host, Justin Stoddart, and I'm very uh, excited today to have with me a gentleman by the name of Patrick Lilly. For those who don't know Patrick, I'm gonna introduce him here in just a sec. Um, let me just remind you that inside of the Think Bigger Real Estate Group on Facebook is where you'll be able to take your learning and go deep with it. If you're not yet a member there, go do that. Uh, but let me share, let me just first say, Patrick, thanks for coming on the show. And then I'm gonna just gonna like boast on you for just a minute. So just like bear with me. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. So Patrick, you've sold over 1,200 properties worth more than 1.35 billion. Uh, you received Keller Williams's Pinnacle Award, which is given to only 20 agents. You've been uh, Wall Street Journal's top 250 agents in the nation, Inman's 101 most influential agents in North America, featured in the Billion Dollar Agent by Steve Cantor. Um, and, and, and you've got an amazing coaching company, Real Estate Vision. Um, I'm so excited to have you here to talk about mindset to talk about like what is the mindset of a successful agent slash human being. I think I'm just thrilled to get into your brain a little bit after all those accomplishments, after all that experience, to hear how you've done what you've done and how it all starts up here. Thank you for being here again, by the way. Oh, thank you, Justin. I appreciate it. Um, so let's talk about mindset. We're going to do a kind of a brief kind of fire round here really quick for those that are listening. This is going to be a brief episode, so, so stay with us here. But Patrick, you've gotten into your own mind a little bit and now into the minds of many others through your coaching programs. What does the mindset of a successful person, not just for people that have a quick success, right? Kind of a like one hit wonder, but to have a massive, like a long career of success like you've done. Talk to us about what that mindset looks like. Well, basically there's two types of mindsets. There's a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And a fixed mindset thinks that um, whatever traits, abilities, uh, intelligence that you have, that that's a fixed amount and it cannot be changed. So if you see yourself as a procrastinator and you say that you'll always be a procrastinator, then that's a fixed mindset. And we all, that's obvious that a fixed mindset is not something that's going to help us to achieve our goals. And that's what the vast majority of people have. Um, the question is, is even if you do have a growth mindset and anybody that's always trying to become a better version of themselves, um, has a growth mindset, they still have areas within their lives that are fixed mindsets. And to be able to look at those areas where you're fixed and shift it to growth um, is where the power comes from. So let me give you an example. I was going to be doing a, uh, 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 I was giving a speech to a team. Actually, I was doing a, a coaching advance for a team recently and they wanted me to talk a mindset. That's why this is top of mind, by the way. And as I was preparing for the two hour portion of the, of the interactive talk, I realized the things that I was going to say, I wasn't doing myself in certain parts of my life. And it was like, as I'm, as I'm writing this, I'm going, Patrick, you know, listen to your own advice and, and get out of your fixed mindset. So one of the areas that I have a fixed mindset in is about working out and how, um, um, I don't go in with a good attitude about it. I do it just to get done because I have to get it done. So today, when I worked out with my trainer via Zoom, I went in and, and started saying to myself ahead of time, I'm doing this so I will live a long life and have a vital life for the next 20 years or whatever amount of time. And when I focus on that, when I set my mind to the activity I actually enjoyed today's workout. It was fun. I was actually a little obnoxious with my uh, trainer. And um, I don't know if he enjoyed it, but I know that I had one of the best workouts I've had in a long time. So being able to identify when you have a fixed mindset and to shift into a growth mindset is key. And then when you're in the growth mindset, realizing there's no such thing as failure, there's no such thing as mistakes, because you're always one of the best teachers in the world is 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 not getting it right and then changing. Boy, I want to unpack some of that because there's a lot there that you just described. I think all of us have this sense of I am this way, right? Like you could have put in the procrastinator, like I am a procrastinator, right? I am somebody who doesn't like working out, right? I am a heavy person. I am a I mean, whatever person, like well, all of us have these. I'm not good at math. I'm not good at numbers. Yes. I'm not yeah. creative. Yeah, I'm not a detail person, right? I don't. Like I'm not a good communicator. Like all of us, we whether we say these things out loud or whether we say them internally to ourselves, which is probably even more damaging um, and, and creates more of a finality, right? Um, all of these things keep us from where you say we all have the ability to go in every area, which is have an open mindset to say, um, no, I actually, I'm currently here, but I, 
I, I, I'm moving in this direction. Like I'm, I, I enjoy this or I, I, I'm becoming a detail person, right? I mean, whatever it is that you want to become, is that where it starts? You really just start talking to yourself differently? Yeah. And I think that's, you know, we've always heard everybody talks about affirmations and how successful affirmations are for you. And that's all an affirmation is, is trying to change your fixed mindset to a growth mindset. And you're not lying to yourself. You're you're describing to yourself who you want to be. So a lot of people like a good affirmation is, is I love going to the gym. When you don't love going to the gym, you could say, oh, you're lying to yourself. Well, no, what I'm telling myself is who I want to be, where I want to be down the road. And that's not a lie. That's one of the biggest affirmations you can give yourself. Yeah, you you get to decide. I, 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 I like that thought is that you're the author of your own story. Someone else didn't write it for you and you get to just be an inanimate object living out what they wrote. No, you have the pen. You're the author. If you don't like a certain part about it, it's not going to be an overnight fix. You're not going to like go from, from being unhealthy to healthy overnight. But guess what? It With several chapters, right? You're writing the chapter. Start the chapter differently, right? I love that. It's so empowering. And take little steps. Don't, don't go right from... Um, I enjoy working out to I'm going to be running a, a marathon this month. You need to take little steps that you can achieve. Then you need to watch your progress and not only celebrate your progress, but to be grateful that you have the ability to change yourself. So all of those elements add up to um, ways that you can be in a growth mindset. And, um, I'm always amazed. I'm always like my boyfriend. He says he's a procrastinator, and um, and he, that he doesn't even that he can't change it. And you know, if you haven't, for those of us who know me, uh, I, I get a hammer and I keep on hammering it until I break through somebody. Um, and he's starting to change on that. Maybe I'm not a procrastinator anymore. Maybe that's what I'm just telling myself. It's working. He's, he's starting to believe it. Yeah, yeah. It's taken a while. <laughs> But it's working, yes. Well, and I think that's where everybody that's listening to this today, right? He, th this is kind of the clarion call to everybody is that you can change. And it's like Patrick said, it's not going to be an overnight thing. But if you want to go on to build a successful business and a significant life, right, which is the essence of, of this show and why it exists and why I'm passionate about it because it aligns with who I am is the, the belief that there's there's untapped potential inside of each and every one of us and that we all need to wake up to the fact that we can become more. We can become more impactful in this world. Um, what Patrick just spoke, there are some very, very powerful truths. Very powerful. Yeah, I think one of the most, the greatest questions you can ask yourself daily is, who do I want to be? Or is this the person that I want to be? So when, when I get bent out of shape, and I'm not the best version of Patrick because somebody's pushed my buttons, one of the questions when I'm when I'm when I'm reacting that way, I'm being very reacting. Is I like to say, Patrick, is this the person you really want to be? And the answer to that is almost always no. Sometimes it's yes. Sometimes I just like I want to just f you and stay there, and I don't want to grow. <laughs> most, most of the times I do, and if I do, then that enables me to say, you know, to step back a step and say. How can I deal with this differently? What do I need to do? What do I need to believe about myself? What do I need to own? Um, and by asking those questions, I can then get into that growth mindset so I can get my mind in the right place. Because it's almost, I don't know, I think just about everything's about your mind. I mean, certainly there's skill sets and there's, there's physical abilities and there's your level of intelligence and intuition, but mindset trumps everything. Well, it does, right? It all it's, it's it starts everything, it ends everything. You, you you identified another really interesting point when you were talking about this example of you going to the gym and not loving the experience on most days. But you said something. You said, "No, I do love it, and here's why." Right? And I want to tap into that just a little bit because you said, "Because I'm going to live for a healthy life for the next 20 years." Right? How much does that play into it? Once people come to this realization of like. They ask the tough question to themselves, interview themselves and say, am I who I want to be right now? Whether it be physically, whether it be spiritually, whether it be relationally, whether it be uh, career wise, whether it be financially, am I who I want to be right now? If the answer is no, not yet, 
then you said start to take some baby steps towards that. And it sounds like part of that process, um, what we're learning from you is this this process of saying and 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 why, right? Because I think that's that's what's going to be critical to actually give you the motivation to do it. Is it no? I like if I don't love going to the gym, and I'm gonna say was I like, and I'm gonna tell myself I love going to the gym. There better be a reason why behind it because it's not going to be an immediate like transformation. And be like, oh yeah, this is awesome. You need to associate the activity with your goal. And if you haven't truly identified the goal, then you're not going to be able to associate the activity with it. So let me give you an example. In past, when I was younger and I used to go to the gym um, or work out, and I didn't like it then either, but it was about looks and getting laid and uh, you know being a marketable co commodity in that respect. And honestly, that never really touched my soul. That never was really a good reason for me. It was a very superficial reason. And then I'd say about, I don't know, seven years ago, I was trying, I was going in, I had a Lexus sedan and that's not a small car. And I had trouble getting into it one day. And I thought, I thought this is, this is messed up. Is this what my life is going to be like now? Uh, and that's not what I want some changes have to be made. So now when I now when I associate working out when I'm really good at it, it's I associate it with I want to live a vital life. I want to be flexible and strong and I want to have a good cardio and I want to be able to to be as vital as I am now 10, 15, 20 years from now. That's really important to me. And now when I associate the activity, when I'm when I'm struggling because he's got too much weight when I'm doing a squat, um, it's like, no, this is making me strong. This is making me vital. This is going to make me live long. Then all of a sudden my crappy attitude goes away and it's like, oh, that's why I'm doing this. So the same thing could be happening. Like, like if, if you really thought that making cold calls was really important for your business, I'm not saying it is, but if you did, you, if you could change your attitude about uh, associating with it, these are my goals that I have for my family, for my for my financial well-being. This is why I'm making these calls, whether they're warm or cold, um, and this is why I'm doing it. You're going to have a better attitude about making that call than if you're just uh, doing it because you've been told you should do it or you or you think you should do it. It's so it's such powerful stuff, Patrick. You've not only given us. Uh, this this kind of deep probing question that we need to ask ourselves it is who I am, who I actually want to be, and the realization that we can change it. But now, now you've given us some, some very kind of tactical tools to to not just take next steps, but to also have a motivation behind it, right? So there's real purpose behind it, not superficial, but you know deeply purposeful. Um, great stuff. I, I want to ask kind of this final question. We promised listeners it would be it would be brief. I hope we get this opportunity again. Uh, but the final question of this show that I ask every guest that comes on um, is you are a big thinker, Patrick, and I'm, I'm privileged to have you here on the show today. What does somebody like you do to continue to be a big thinker, to continue to expand your possibilities? What does that look like for you? Hmm. So I've never been asked that question. Okay. I'll tell you what's popping up right away. One of the things that I'm learning is more effective. So, so many successful people do, 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 do. They've got a million different things going on. They love being busy. They love the distraction. They didn't get bored by not being doing a million different things. The problem with that is that it doesn't allow any open space for inspiration to come in. Whether inspiration is by from God or the universe or your highest self. But when I find that I leave time that's open, I can allow whatever messages need to come in about where my soul wants to go down the road. And by, I mean, your greatest teacher is that small voice that can come in and lead you or God or the universe or your highest self, whatever term you like to use, wants to lead you instead of thinking, oh, I need to lead myself all the time. Boy. That's powerful, Patrick. It is interesting how the creative, uh, inspirational uh, forces, right, whatever they be for you, uh, you're right. They, 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 they have to come at like when we're quiet almost and, and, and where there's space to, to have them. 
I think you've just taught us a very profound lesson about the importance of not just being busy for busy sake and packing our schedule because it makes us feel good, but actually block out some time yeah. to sit and think and ponder. And I think one of the things that will show up in that, in that conversation, that interview with yourself or your maker or, you know, whatever you uh, believe that you'll probably start to identify like, am like, am I who I want to be? If, if, if this were to be my last day on earth, would I be happy with who I've become? Yeah. And uh, if not, great, I'm still here. I got a chance to move more in that direction that would make me happy. Great stuff, Patrick. I'm, I'm uh, again, so grateful for your time to come on and, and treat us really with some amazing mindset uh, insight. Uh, and I look forward to continuing our, our collaboration. Um, and uh, it's, it's been really fun to get to know you. So thank you so much. And I want to remind everybody listening here today from the amazing insight from somebody who's produced at just the highest levels, um, we, I want to remind you all and give you this final charge, which is to go think bigger. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate it, my friend. Thank you, Tony.